Hi everyone, it's Bethany. In this tutorial, we are going to make a very simple little photo frame. And this is so beginner friendly. That's very easy to do. There's only a couple steps and it looks really, really pretty in the end. So I got this little, um, wood frame from Hobby Lobby. I've actually done this craft a couple of times and it always turns out so pretty so I thought I would do one for the channel. So it actually comes in the bare wood section. It's in the wood pile section and so it comes not painted so you can paint this any color that you'd like. I used my favorite chalk paint that you guys know I love. If you guys don't know what I use um, I will place the actual chalk paint in the description box below so make sure you're always utilizing that list of materials that way you know everything that I'm using to create the same look if you'd like to replicate it. So we're going to use a um, frame. Now I put about two coats of the um, chalk paint on here and then I did a sand with an electric sander just to smooth out the brush strokes. I used a foam brush. It's my favorite way to put paint on or chalk paint on and um, it turned out great. So the um, the sander did a little distressing as well and I'm just in love with distressing so you guys will see it a little bit more once I zoom in but for other materials you're also going to need a scraper tool weeding tool and scissors we're going to measure our design and then we're actually going to be using the sweet little Cricut Joy today to make this um, frame and so if you are just beginning with your Cricut Joy this is probably a really good project to start off with because it's a very simple cut very simple project so for our material we're actually going to be using some smart material so we are going to be doing matteless cutting today um, this is the Cricut smart vinyl so it has its mat. Um, this is the matte part, which is white. Um, the matte is already built in, and this color is actually powder blue. It's my favorite. You guys know I always grab this when I'm at Michael's or if I'm placing a Cricut order because it's so pretty. I think everybody should have this color. Um, for other materials, our final material is just going to be some of the Cricut transfer tape. This is the smart transfer tape. Um, it's a regular grip, not the strong grip. So I have not tried the strong grip. I'm a little nervous too because because I do not really like Cricut transfer tape that much um, in the past, but I grabbed some of the um, Smart Material regular transfer tape and I'll link it below for you so you know exactly what I have and I love this. So it's just the regular grip and we're gonna use that today. Um, it's a little bubbly because I have used this once before, but you can use it multiple times. If you think it still has some really good stick to it, then keep it, just put it back on that little white um, sheet and then save it for another project. It's a great way to um, keep your costs down with material. Materials. All right, so I'm just going to measure this little space. I'm just going to put a little text on the bottom of this frame and the space I'm working with, it looks to be seven and three quarters by about three inches. So I'm just going to use those measurements and design space so that I can properly size my design and make it fit perfectly on this little bottom part. So let's go ahead and pop into Cricut Design Space and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to design this. It's a very, very simple, sleek, classic um, look and I think you guys are going to really like it. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and if you'll notice, we have the Joy selected right here. So if you haven't already done so, and if you do have multiple machines um, registered on your Design Space, you'll just come up here and click Cricut Joy. So what we're going to do now is we are going to replicate that um, little square, or no, it's rectangular, the little rectangular um, surface area that we have to um, work with with placing vinyl on. So um, we're going to actually just make a shape box and we're just going to click the square. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click unlock because we're not going to be using a perfect square. If it's locked, then it's going to make sure your length and your width are constant and the same. So by unlocking it, you can, you know, make it any um, length and width that you'd want. You can customize it. So up here, here is where you can just type in your um, dimensions. I'm at 7.75. Remember, this is just what we measured with our measuring tape um, by three. And so I'll just color this white because the frame is white. And now we have a little bit of space to work with. So that way we know, you know, how much um, of a design we can put on here. So my design is actually going to be really basic. I'm just going to be using the text box and I'm just going to type out um, some text that I want to put on this frame. So I am using the font Cake Basics. It's this one right here. It's a really, really simple, classic font. It's um, just going to make this be a very tastefully simple project. So I'm just going to click that one and I'm going to add my text here and I'm going to say, I love us, period. Okay, so now what I can do is I can drag it up to my little template here. 
and then I can just make it as big or small as I'd like. So I personally like to have a lot of negative space around my design. I think it looks really intentional and nice. So I don't like having, for example, I don't like having, you know, my design reaching both sides. I think it looks a little um, too much. I don't think it looks as professional and polished. So I'm gonna undo that a couple times, my sizing. Um, one more time. Okay, that's where I was at. So looks like I'm right about 5.9 by a little bit, well, about an inch and a half in length. So that is what I am going to cut. It looks great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hide my little rectangle because I don't need it anymore. It served its purpose of just helping me size my design. Now remember, you can add any text that you want. You can add images. Images are just right here if you want to add images. I'm just keeping this a very basic, simple. I love this little phrase. I think it's just simple and fun and it's going to go perfectly with the picture I plan to put inside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click make it. And now it's just going to little have a little pop-up that asks me how I'm going to proceed with my Cricut Joy. So there are some options here. You can use smart materials and again that's without a mat so it's matless cutting because the mat is built in. You can do on the mat so if you have some other spare materials that are not smart materials or if you have smart materials that are too small um, for you know feeding in by themselves then make sure that you select this option. I'll also link up here um, a tutorial about how to use scrap smart materials if you need some help doing that. If you need help just kind of figuring out how to use those really small smart material scraps in projects. Um, and the other option are on the, uh, if you're making a card, there's the card um, mat option. So for this one, we are using smart material. So we'll click that and say done. And now what it's going to do is it just places it right on the mat. It looks perfectly. Actually, I guess this is on the vinyl because it's <laughs> um, actual vinyl. And I'm just going to verify here that we are doing it without a mat. And then what we can do is we can click continue. Now it's just going to locate our joy via Bluetooth. And remember that the joy is buttonless. So everything is going to be, um, you know, you're going to boss everything around on your computer. You're not going to be pressing any buttons on the joy because it doesn't have any. So now what you're going to do is you are just going to collect or select the material that you're going to use. And we're using smart vinyl permanent. So we'll click that. We're going to keep it on default pressure and then we're going to load our machine. Once we've loaded our machine, this sec third section will pop up and it'll say click go. The go button is right here and we will um, be able to get the joy cutting. So let's go ahead and load our machine and we'll get this little design cut out. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to open up the joy and we are going to grab our smart material and we are just going to feed it into the machine. So what you're going to do is you're just going to place um, the material right here and there's some little lines and um, guides that you'll just use to feed it through and then you're just going to press it against the wheels and it's going to pull it in. So now what it's doing is it's just loading, whoops, loading the um, material and making sure that we have enough. So it's really nice because it makes sure that you have enough um, material length to do the cut. And once it verifies that, then it will tell you to click go on the screen. So we'll click go and it will start cutting. So there it goes. And it's really, really quiet. This is going to be a very simple cut. Um, it's already at 30%. So it's super, super fast and super easy. Now for this, once I did, um, do my sanding I did just take like a damp paper towel and just kind of dusted it off that way I didn't have any leftover um, paint dust or wood dust from the sanding um, and it's all ready for the vinyl to be laid down so now that the cut is complete so we can just say unload and it's already on there that looks great so now what we'll do is we will just take our scissors and we will just cut out our design leaving the remaining vinyl on the roll that way we can just kind of keep it all together so I usually just make a cut mark and then I turn it over and then I can use these little um, handy grids on the back just to kind of keep my line nice and straight when I'm completing my cut okay so I can actually just cut this all the way across because um, I can refeed this through the joy 
um because it had it's nice and full size but this piece now cannot be um just fed through like this so again make sure you reference that video that I had linked if you need help um you know knowing exactly what to do with this piece now okay so now just keep these scraps put them aside and now what we're going to do is we are going to weed out our designs so we're all done with our scissors and what we're going to do is take our weeding tool and what we're going to do is just poke kind of the top corner and this is just kind of grabbing the background area so weeding is just removing any part of the design that you're not going to use on your project so I'm just taking the background off first okay and then this is all garbage now I'm just going to go through and weed out the middles of the letters and I just kind of collect them on my finger here and that was already it. So I always just double check by running my weeding tool over each letter to make sure I have everything weeded out, which I do. Okay, so now what we'll do is I'm just gonna snip off this little extra piece here. Okay, and let me see if I have enough transfer tape. I might actually need to grab a new roll, which is just fine. Okay, so didn't quite have enough, which is just fine. Maybe I have some tucked in here too. Sometimes I just keep, oh I do. Sometimes I keep all my little scraps tucked into the inside of the roll just to um, keep everything handy. So I'll use this little piece. It was actually a big piece, but I will just trim it down. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now I'll just see how much I need, and it looks like I can still save a lot of transfer tape. I'll just cut off the size that works and save the rest. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'm just going to kind of poke the edge, kind of like I'm weeding again, just to grab a little piece of this transfer tape up. And then once I have it, I can grab it. Oops, I had it and I lost it. Okay, there we go. So now once I have it, I can pull that off of the sheet. And I'll probably keep this handy because I'll probably be able to reuse this transfer tape. And then I'm just going to lay this down right over my design. Just like that. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'm just going to use my little squeegee tool and I'm just going to press down on the vinyl and the transfer tape. And this is just kind of helping the vinyl and the transfer tape meet in the middle and meet together. So I'm pressing them together. That way we can pull off the vinyl from our carrier sheet and then get it ready to be applied on our design. Okay. So now what I do is I leave it faced um, down. And what I will do now is I'm just going to start peeling away this backing from the transfer tape. And then it will leave the design or the text right on. If you need help, um, just use your little weeding tool just to kind of grab a letter if one of them gets a little stubborn. Um, but it's going to now transfer the design onto the transfer tape. So this is how you will remove your vinyl from the mat because this is a mat because it's a smart material okay so you'll want to make sure that you get oops that one didn't want to come off you want to make sure um you get all the little pieces if you miss one that's okay we can go back with some tweezer tool um tools to get that on there so no worries okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to being very careful, it really wants to cling and stick. I'm just gonna center that the best that I can, remembering that I have a little period to, to place separately. So I'll put that, take that into consideration. So I'm just gonna center this the best that I can. Let's see, bring it down a little. That looks pretty good. Okay, so then you just lay it down and then what you're going to do is you are going to take your squeegee or your scraper tool and then just press down and help that vinyl now stick to the frame. Now remember it's a little bit over to the left because I have that little period that's going to come right there. So now what I can do is 
just press that down and then I'll just take that little corner again and peel my design. And it leaves the vinyl right on the picture frame. So that looks great. So now just with my little tweezers, I, these come in major handy. I love them. I'm just going to kind of bend away the mat and then grab my little period with my tweezers. And then I'll just simply come right here and place it down. And I just will rub it down with my finger. No need for transfer tape, just tiny little design. And that is perfect just to place almost like a sticker. All right, so that's all done. So now what I can do is the frame now does come with um, the glass and it comes with the little back piece. So that's all included. And now what I will do is I will just place my little picture inside. So I will turn it over, place my glass, and my photo. Perfect. Make sure I got that right side up. Okay, and then I will place my little back in here. Perfect. And then put the little wings down. And then it's all done. So that is how you make a really easy frame. So this is a really wonderful idea if you, for example, wanted to make a frame um, for grandparents or you, I mean, you could personalize this to make this anything. Say you're going to give a baby shower gift. You could actually, you know, put the baby's name and maybe some birthday um, stats on there, you know, their birthday, um, anything like that. This is, it, the possibilities are really endless. So I also really like the idea of having a picture in mind. So if you have a real, a picture that you just love, um, this is a picture that I really love. It's one of my favorite family photos that we have. Um, so one of the fun things about that is if you have a picture in mind, you can kind of, you know, match the vinyl to match that particular picture or match the phrase to match the tone of the photo. So anyway, that's just kind of some styling um, tips that I have if you wanted to create something like this yourself. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I had fun creating it with the joy today. It's so fun, so easy. And again, it's very beginner friendly. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. We're going to be doing a lot more fun things with the joy and uh, the maker, of course, will pop its way back onto the table too. So make sure you are all set up by clicking the subscribe button. All right, everyone, I'll see you in the next video.